Greetings, fellow detectives. Wizard Kitten here, bringing you a new build in my series, Building Nancy Drew in The Sims 4. Today we are doing one of the more secondary locations in a game where I've already done a build. I did Aunt Eloise's house from Secrets Can Kill actually quite a while back now. But recently, uh, as part of our Nancy Drew 2021 streamathon, we played Nancy Drew Secrets Can Kill Remastered, and I got uh, several requests in chat to give Maxine's Diner a try, to try building Maxine's Diner. And I've been working just on the side in my own personal time, in my free time, on a save file for The Sims 4, a realistic family style kind of save file where I'm redoing all the townies, rebuilding all of the lots, in a style that I kind of enjoy. And as part of that, I was like, you know what? Maxine's Diner would actually work really nicely in Del Sol Valley, which is the world which came with the Sims 4 Get Famous expansion pack. Um, it's kind of a LA Hollywood inspired kind of world. And I could see a 50s inspired diner fitting in quite nicely there. So I decided to give Maxine's Diner a try for that save file, and I'm really happy with how it turned out. Um, I spent a long time here trying to get exactly the right color of blue for the walls, but Maxine's Diner is kind of an interesting place because it has a lot of kind of clashing colors in a way, lots of crazy patterns, and a lot of things that I wouldn't necessarily put together like on my own personally but when I was going off of the images from the game it it kind of worked like they actually all kind of worked together and somehow went together okay like I would never personally think to put this kind of turquoise blue with red chairs and red booths but you know somehow it works and I would never think to put them with the black and white tile the marble tile that we have but again it, it kind of works and I was okay with how it turned out the booths that came with the Sims 4 dine out are also quite large, so I have fewer of them in the diner than there are in the game, but the scale is roughly the same. Um, there's pretty much all of the things that you would have seen in Secrets Can Kill in the original Maxine's Diner you would see in this build as well. I made good use of the platform tool. I used a lot of dine out, obviously, because this is a restaurant, so I needed to use Dine Out to make it a functional restaurant. I did use a lot of Get Famous as well, and a lot of the bowling stuff pack for that kind of mid-century modern diner type style. I had to use those packs quite a bit. And then there's also a fair amount of base game in this build too. I never really restrict the packs that I use when I'm building just because especially if I'm trying to do a recreation I want to use as many items as possible that look exactly like the things in the game. For example, we've got the arcade machine in the back here to symbolize the Barnacle Blast and um, I can't remember the other game that's back here, but to symbolize those games, we have the big giant arcade machine. I thought about using a jukebox that looks, you know, exactly like the jukebox that we would see in Maxine's, but it ended up being really small looking. So I decided to use the bigger one that came from Get Famous. I was so happy that the cafe station, like the chef station, has this opening through the window so it looks exactly like it does in the game. Um, all of the chalkboards, we just have so many great items now for community lots that I feel like it was actually fairly easy to find things that looked exactly like they were supposed to look in the game. The bar in Maxine's Diner in the game has these really cool blue lights on the bottom and I tried, you can see the lights on the bottom down there, you can see those. Um, I tried to make them blue, like I had a sim come to the lot and I tried to change the color, but they really didn't change anything. They didn't look nearly as blue as I wanted them to look, so... I ended up not using the lights and I figured the black and white was better than going for a style that just like looked way too busy. That was a stylistic choice that I wanted to make to make things fit in a little bit better. 
You also probably saw me just go into the gallery and pull out a bunch of art. This is kind of a fun tip for building in The Sims 4 if you're trying to not use custom content. You can go into the gallery function and you can search for a ton of different kinds of art and there are so many things that fellow simmers have uploaded to the gallery where they had their sims with a high level of painting skill paint from reference CC art and then they uploaded it to the gallery as paintings and those are just in the game as base game. So all of these paintings that I'm about to put in with like the Coca-Cola and the hot dog, <laughs> I just loved putting those in because they look very similar to the things that you would expect to see in kind of a 50s diner and I uh, got those off the gallery and they're considered base game it's not custom content so if you're ever like feeling like you don't have enough wall art for the game which is a feeling that I have a lot I'm constantly being like gosh I really wish we had more paintings that's something that I always want more of go ahead and like search it in the gallery and see what you can find like I was trying to find um, pinup art <laughs> um, because there are a lot of those kinds of styles in Maxine's diner couldn't really find any good ones but I did find all of these cool diner ones and lots of cool mid-century modern kind of art pieces which I just saved to my library and then I can use them again so very cool feature, very excited about that. Over in this corner here, there's supposed to be a display case and it kind of looks like it's just filled with mementos. So I decided to do the same thing, but just with shelves. I wanted to put a display case, but the way the doors and kind of the layout ended up working, I didn't have enough room. So I figured the shelves would work the same. They would have a similar idea. So I just put some trophies and little like vintage memorials over here, signed posters, just little things that uh, you might see in a diner because I don't know why, but that's just how diners seem to be decorated is with lots of mementos so that's what I did also in this corner um, in Maxine's diner in the game it looks like it's just kind of empty space but I didn't want it to be empty because I thought that was weird to have just like a big empty corner that you can't use so I just made it into a platform I initially put some art around it but with the platform tool being kind of glitchy, I think the art got deleted before I uploaded it to the gallery. It is on the gallery, by the way. Um, my gallery ID is in the description down below. It's Spirit Scarlet 100. So if you want to download any of the Nancy Drew builds that I have done, this one, as well as all of my previous builds, are under that. And make sure you check the include custom content box. None of my builds that I upload to the gallery have custom content in them, but all of them are flagged as having custom content because I happen to have some CC in my games. I don't really use build CC hardly at all. I love the way that build CC looks, but because I'm doing these kinds of builds and I want you guys to be able to download them, I feel like using custom content just makes it too complicated. So I don't ever use custom content for the builds for these recreations. Sometimes in my free time I'll use it, but then I, I always end up just taking it out because I'm just so used to building without it. It's more like I'll look at the CC for fun and then I will use it maybe once or twice and then end up deleting it, which is, I don't know, maybe a bit of a bummer, but <laughs> I've been used to not playing with CC for basically the entire time that I've played The Sims 4 series. I've played The Sims all the way back in Sims 1. I started playing The Sims 1 when that came out. Um, my favorite expansion was The Sims 4 Make, uh, not The Sims 4, The Sims 1 Make and Magic. Oh my gosh, so fun. All of those um, expansions for The Sims 1 were just so cool. I just remember getting them for the first time and just having my mind blown. And then when Sims 2 came out, I switched to that. Same thing, all the expansions were so cool. And Sims 2 was so different from Sims 1. It was like a whole other world. And then of course I played Sims 3 and now I've been playing Sims 4 ever since it came out. And honestly, hot take, I kind of think that Sims 4 might be my favorite iteration of the series so far. The fact that it's still running as well as it is, as late in its life as it is, is really impressive to me. Like it's still running so, so well, not on wood that it continues to do so and all of the packs that have come out I've just been so pumped about well not all of the packs but most of the packs the expansion packs I've really enjoyed all of them there's a couple game packs that I don't really care about at all like I mean we're not even going to talk about Batu. <laughs> don't have that in my game never will 
completely worthless. And a couple stuff packs here and there that I definitely don't need. But The Sims 4 Cottage Living coming out soon? Um, yes, please. Give me that. Take my money, EA. <laughs> I will give it to you immediately. <laughs> Because we're getting llamas and bunnies and cows and chickens. Oh my gosh, I'm I'm seriously so excited. I am so, so pumped to be able to have cottage style build items too, because that's my favorite thing to build is cottages and like suburban houses. Those are the two styles of builds that I love to do the most. So cottage living is going to be my thing. I am so pumped. There's kind of a long pause here. Um, nothing is wrong. <laughs> it's This is when I um, start to kind of like change the frame that I'm looking at when I'm trying to recreate the, the Nancy Drew builds. So anytime I pause for a long time, it's me looking up ref reference images from my own walkthroughs so that I can then use them to help me recreate the game as accurately as possible. And we're pretty much done with the main room here. I'm about to do a gallery wall uh, with a bunch of art that I am, again, going to get from the gallery. This was um, kind of my genius moment here because I searched for vintage art. And not only did I find a couple of really cute things to save to my library, but I also found literally the perfect art. This vintage art, no CC, all of these little pieces of art are absolutely perfect for a diner. They match Maxine's diner flawlessly. Like these look exactly like some of the pieces of art that are in that game. And it allowed me to make a really cool gallery wall over by these um, booths. And I was just so excited to find them. So very pumped by that. And then there are, of course, little parts of Maxine's Diner that we don't see that we still have to add. So I decided to put a bathroom door here over by the jukebox and the arcade. And we are going to build a little bathroom on the side here using the public toilet stalls that came with University. And just kind of going for a mid-century modern style bathroom, trying to stay in line with the style of the diner itself. And then after that, we will do the kitchen area, which again, I tried to make look exactly like the game because this is one of the rare instances where we actually get to see a kitchen in game. Usually we don't. And then I do some landscaping around the outside. I have a bunch of dumpsters from the eco lifestyle uh, expansion pack and I do kind of a grungy behind the diner kind of back area where all the employees would just throw the trash and not really pay that much attention to it. <laughs> it felt very realistic to me and I enjoyed it a lot. And of course using some of this very cool vintage art in other places as well. I used a lot of items that I really have like never used before. Like I've never used this sink before, ever in any build. And I don't think I've used that mirror from the Moschino stuff pack in like ages, probably since I first downloaded the Moschino stuff pack and made like a fashion studio just for fun. Um, that's one of those stuff packs that like you really do not need. There's quite a few stuff packs that when I look at them now, it's like you could definitely get away without having them. There are some that I still really, really like and some that I would absolutely still download. And then there are some like Moschino, honestly bowling stuff, even though I like the mid-century modern furniture. I, my Sims don't go bowling. <laughs> and when they do, it's super glitchy. It just, it's it's not, not something that I necessarily see needing in my game. Luxury Party is has so few items. However, if your Sims have weddings, Luxury Party is actually super helpful for that because it has a lot of items that are really good for wedding celebrations. So that one's kind of tough. What other ones are really not useful at all? Um, my first pet stuff. I got that purely for the hamsters, literally just for the hamsters and the rats and all of those. Um, none of the build items at all, <laughs> which is a little bit upsetting. <laughs> so I'm really happy with how the kitchen for Maxine's Diner turned out. I feel like it actually really looks like the kitchen from the game. And beyond that, it's also just a super functional kitchen. Like it has everything that your Sims restaurant kitchen requires. I used a lot of items from Get to Work as well to help give it more of an industrial kind of kitchen feel. So a lot of the posters on the walls like the, the person on fire poster definitely reminded me of the boiler room, which was really exciting. Um, and 
I put some pipes on the walls, I put a bunch of just metal items everywhere. <laughs> and I did end up putting uh, two cook areas, and I think when I went to visit this lot with a sim, only one chef was actually cooking. There weren't actually two. Sometimes there might be though, I think it probably depends. However, when I tested it, there was only one chef. And I did test it, and it looked like the restaurant was working pretty well. I know a lot of people have had trouble with Dine Out and say that it's super glitchy. It glitches for me sometimes, again, knock on wood, but it, for the most part, works. Like, I've, it, it does have its issues, but I still really, really like Dine Out as a game pack. It's super just important to me to be able to have restaurants in a world because I think that's such a big family kind of activity. In fact, in my save file, every single world has at least one restaurant and I have a bunch of different themed restaurants in different places around the different worlds. So like in um, Selva Dorada, I have a restaurant that purely serves Selva Doradian cuisine. In Oasis Springs, I have a Mexican restaurant in Let's see, what do I have in Willow Creek? In Willow Creek, I think I have like a fancy Italian restaurant, like a pretty bougie type restaurant, <laughs> which was really fun. Um, in Del Sol Valley, I now have this. I have like a 50s diner. Oh, and I have to talk about the menu too. So I did a custom menu for this restaurant, for Maxine's Diner, and I based it entirely off of the menu from the game. And if you've played Secrets Can Kill Remastered and you have looked at the menu, Menu for Maxine's Diner, it's pretty absurd. Like a lot of the items on the menu sound really weird, really gross. There's only a few normal sounding things on the menu. And that's exactly what I based the menu off of. So if your Sims go to this diner, if they come to this version of Maxine's Diner and they order some food, they're going to have some weird choices. It's going to be a very eclectic, very random menu with um, maybe not a lot of normal choice items. I feel like for the entrees, that's probably where most of the normal choice items are because there are just like burgers and sandwiches and like a grilled cheese and stuff like that. But the drinks are super weird. <laughs> the drinks are very strange. The drink choices, the dessert choices are super random and super weird. And there's only three or the three of them, three, four, five. There's no more than five, but they're all very strange. <laughs> so I had a lot of fun with that. The outside of Maxine's Diner too is just this kind of strange blue color. So I used this blue striped kind of wallpaper from the University Expansion Pack and it looks pretty similar actually. It's not too far off. And I loved using the red squiggly words above the awnings because it looks exactly like the ones in the game. Um, on In Maxine's Diner in the game when you go there, there's a sign above the awnings that says like, good coffee, hamburgers. And I feel like if you have to say that your coffee is good, your coffee probably isn't good. Like if you have to be like, good coffee, I swear. <laughs> then I don't believe you. I don't believe that the Maxine's Diner coffee is very good. I also did the landscaping very similar to how it is when Nancy goes up to the diner itself and you can see the outside of it very briefly. So the, the landscaping in the front is very similar to that. The landscaping out the back, like I mentioned earlier, is just kind of this grody trash area with the big dumpsters. And then around Maxine's Diner itself, I tried to use a bunch of landscaping items that matched the surrounding areas. That's something I've been doing a lot lately, and I think it's a really good tip for landscaping is to look at the plants in the surrounding environment and try to match those as closely as possible because then your lot looks like it actually belongs and it gives you some good ideas for different plants to use as well. So I put in some palm trees eventually and then some flowers and bushes that kind of match some of the surrounding flora of Del Sol Valley. But putting together this like grody dumpster area was very fun with all of these debug items. Thank goodness for the debug menu for helping us make super cluttered, nasty looking spaces. That's always very fun. I also put a bike out because I figured one of the employees would probably like ride their bike to work. <laughs> and I thought that was just kind of a fun little touch. A couple of benches to make it uh, a little bit more, I don't know, inviting to have your sims have some places to sit outside maybe while they're waiting for a table or people can go sit there after they've eaten together and hang out before they all go their separate ways that kind of thing 
And now we're looking through the debug menu to find more landscaping options. It is also a nice tip if you are trying to save money when you're building to look for the plants in the debug menu because they are all free. So if you're trying to build like a starter home, for example, and you don't have that much money, Basically what you usually have to do is not have any landscaping for your house and then it looks kind of sad, but if you use the debug items, you can use them and you don't have to pay for them. So that's always a fun little touch that I enjoy doing very much. But anyway, we are going to be coming up on the screenshots here very soon. Um, thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know in the comments what you thought of this build. Do you think it looks like Maxine's Diner? Do you think I captured the vibes? Uh, let me know what you think. Let me know what other builds you would like to see. I do, of course, know that some of the big builds um, like Blackmore Manor and Castle Finster, I, of course, know that I still need to do those, and I do intend to do them. Um, they're just big and intimidating, but I will get to them at some point. But if there's any smaller locations that you also want to see, um, let me know which ones I should prioritize. I'd be curious to hear what you have to say. And as always, please feel free to like, comment, subscribe, and hit that notification bell for more Nancy Drew and Sims 4 content. Thank you so much for watching, fellow detectives. I will see you soon.